Okay, so today, welcome back to a video, and what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be going over what do I run on my home lab, what services do I use, what would I recommend. Um, so we're going to be going over all of my servers, and I'll, I'll show you kind of what they do, and we'll talk about how I use them, and uh, I'll show you some of my recommended softwares and things that I think that people should be using. So we'll just get on to the first server. Okay, so we're going to start right here. So this is a uh, PowerEdge T310 by Dell. Um, this is currently my main server. Everything runs off of this. Um, so as of now, this has got a Xeon X340. Yeah, yeah, X340. Um, that's eight cores, eight threads, um, as well as twenty-four gigabytes of RAM. Uh, so it's not the best in terms of performance. I could do with a bit more RAM, but it is kind of maxed out at the moment. Um, this idles at anywhere between ninety to one hundred and thirty watts, um, just depending on what it's doing. Uh, which is a bit high, that works out to about a pound a day on average, which is a lot, but unfortunately, oh well. Um, so this is currently runs everything, so it's got inside, there's a dual port network card that I've added in, which is passed through to PFSense, which runs um, my router, but we'll get onto that in a minute. Um, that is in addition to the two network ports it's already got, which is for Proxmox. So um, all of my servers run Proxmox as the OS. Um, I have experimented with other things like, um, what's the name, Unraid, there you go. Um, but I found Proxmox just because it's free It's and it has better support for older hardware. Um, I found it just works a lot better. So we're going to jump into the Proxmox screen now and I'll walk you through all the VMs running on this machine. Okay, so here you can see for that first server, um, this is obviously, like I said, all of my servers are on Proxmox. I just think it works really, really well. Um, so this is the, the GUI. So going from the top, we've got Ubuntu server. Um, if you go to the console here, um, this is just kind of a uh, Ubuntu command line. It's Ubuntu about the desktop, effectively. Um, this runs a couple of services, but primarily all it does is it's a Docker host. Um, and there is a particular container which you could run, um, and it's called Portainer. Um, and I would strongly recommend you check it out. Um, it just gives you this really nice GUI that you can use um, to see all of the images that you've got downloaded, and you can see all of the containers. And if I go here, you can see the ones that are running. You can immediately get kind of shells into them, into like, these containers, and see exactly what's going on. Um, really easily do all the ports and set up just just if you work in Docker at all, strongly recommend. In terms of what's actually running here, um, a lot of stuff comes and goes. There's not a there's not a lot particularly here at the moment. Um, there's three WordPress sites at the moment. Um, so one for my main website, one for a secondary website that I run, as well as just kind of like a test one that goes between them so you can just if you want to preview a change and don't act, don't want to actually write it out to the world uh you can use this one um nginx proxy manager um what this is is it's this web hosted gui for nginx effectively so what you do is instead of in your router of choice port forwarding um to the individual servers what you do is you take Port 443, and only port 443, that's the only you, port you should ever need to port forward, or at least in terms of um, HTTPS web URL stuff, and you send it directly to this server here, what, or the, to, the, to this so Nginx Proxy Manager. And what this does is it looks at the incoming domain name, and then it uses that to determine what server it should be sent to. So it you sends it to the address, so, for example, if I just come into my main one here, so anytime any traffic comes in that's trying to go to tobyrighting10.com or www.tobyrighting10.com, it will redirect that. To the IP address of the server, which in this case is the same one that it's running on because it will be the WordPress running in Docker. And you can see here, this particular WordPress site, actually, it's this one, has got 8005 as the port. So what this does is it takes any incoming traffic to that, redirects it to the IP address of the server, and it's the port 8005. You can add block lists and, like, password protect it if you wanted to. And you can also force it to, um, I'm just going to turn that on, 
uh, use SSL certificates as well. Um, so I use Cloudflare for all of my domain related stuff. Um, and you've, it's got this feature called Origin Certificates. So you generate a certificate which you install on Cloudflare and install here on the Nginx Proxy Manager thing. So you can see here I've got two for the two domains. And then this basically encrypts any of the traffic between Nginx Proxy Manager and Cloudflare. So Cloudflare uses Let's Encrypt to get your public SSL keys, and that's what everybody uses. So that encrypts between the internet and all the people using your services and Cloudflare. And then you use this origin certificate to encrypt between Cloudflare and your server in, and then Nginx Proxy Manager. And then anything after that, um, chances are it's not going to be encrypted, but it will all be inside your internal network anyway. And if you use good network security, which I don't necessarily do, um, then it will, it's it's all secure that way. Um, you can also do things like redirection hosts, so redirect one URL to another, um, as well as, like I said, create these access lists, so you can give it a name, and then you can set a username and password for each. Um, so if you wanted to password or protect a particular website, uh, you could, or you can like make it so that it only allows from specific public IP addresses, or so on. Um, so that, that's what this does. Um, going down, you've got Open Speed Test. Um, if I just create a new tab here and go to the IP address of it. Okay, so here you can see here, this is effectively just a locally hosted speed test server. Uh, it's a really good network analysis tool um, just for testing connections and making sure they're doing what they should do. So um, it just runs on your servers. Um, so if you've got a really good internet connection at home, you could also just kind of put it behind a domain, um, run it through Nginx Proxy Manager and have your own speed test server, but uh, our internet's too slow to like bother doing that. So that's what that does. Um, then of course you've got Portainer, which is this. Uh, like I said, so it just runs in a Docker container. Um, so that's Ubuntu server. Next you've got PFSense. Um, again, I'm sure most of you are probably aware of this, but it's a really good firewall router software. Um, it runs on your server, so in Proxmox, uh, if you go to the Networks tab, uh, there's these two network ports here, so you've got a WAN and a LAN, so this one goes directly to the fire, um, not fiber converter, ONT downstairs, um, so it comes in through the phone line, goes, and then eventually makes its way pretty much straight to this port here, that gets passed through directly to PFSense, and then it comes back to the LAN, goes through to the network switch, and goes out to the network, um, and it, 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 it's, it's, it's such a powerful tool and is significantly better if you're running something like the regular, your ISP provided router. Um, they're not very good in a lot of cases and this is a significant upgrade if you have the ability to use it. Trunas, um, that's for file servers, uh, so you know if you wanted network attached storage that's what this would be. Currently it's not running as you can see here, um, that's just because I haven't really had the storage abilities to use it although after a recent upgrade check the video out which i did on that by the way it's not a very good one it's a pretty boring video but um it should be the one before this one i'll put a little link and a card um so i should be able to use this now uh ubuntu this is just ubuntu desktop for testing linux based things windows server this is kind of where all of my ram has gone at the moment because i don't really have much of it left um so at the moment all of this does is run minecraft servers for me and some friends um, which isn't very good. What I'm actually going to do is, you can see here, here is another Ubuntu server VM, which has got Teradaptyl installed on it. I'm in the process of setting that up. And what Teradaptyl is, is it's a game server host. Um, it runs, it, it uses, it doesn't run in Docker, but it uses it to kind of host a bunch of game servers. And it works really, really well for creating and managing game servers. And if you do anything with them, I'm sure you've probably heard of it, but it's really, really good. Um, Windows Server, once I have transitioned it over and moved it over, this will probably be shut down most of the time, but I will experiment with some Active Directory just to get some experience in that field because it's kind of the right sort of thing to be doing. Free PBX here, this is just a temporary one. Um, I recently acquired a bunch of IP telephones, um, I'll show you some pictures of them now, but um, this is it's what all of them connect to and it manages all the cool infrastructure. Uh, yeah. Okay, so now we're up in the loft, and this is my rack. Um, unfortunately, this switch here um, is misconfigured. It's not quite working properly, so I've got this one on the top here. So it looks a bit of a mess at the moment. 
Um, okay, so going from the bottom here, this is my backup server. Um, so this runs Proxmox backup server. Um, and then this I'll turn on probably once a month. Um, and we'll back up the server that's downstairs to it. Um, just as a, an additional copy. So this server already does a self backup to the internal hard drives. It backs the SSDs and all the VMs up to the hard drives. But every now and again I will back up to this thing here. So we're currently running a backup now. So we're going to get into Proxmox Backup Server and I'll show you this briefly. Okay, so this is a uh, HP ProLiant DL120G6. Um, it's got an i3 in it, it's not very good. This is just kind of my general purpose server at the moment. Um, this stays off pretty much most of the time. At the moment it's got Proxmox Backup Server installed on it, but this changes OS regularly. Um, so it had backup server on it now so that I can move some VMs around. If you've seen a recent video, or it might come out after this one, um, I had to change the SSDs and hard drives in a server. So we use this temporarily. But it's had Proxmox on it. It's had Unraid on it. It's, it. It moves around. So I'm not really going to show you anything with this one. So moving on to this one. So this is a PowerEdge R710. Um, now this is what I would like to be as my main server. This is what should be running everything rather than that little one downstairs. But obviously this is an old unit now. Um, it's quite a few generations ago. So it's full of, uh, I think these are 500 gig SAS drives. Um, but unfortunately this idles at about like 200 watts and with the power, that's just way too much. So I can't use this at the moment. I'd like to be, but uh, I, I'm seriously considering getting a much better more power efficient more modern server but um for now that's just a bit out of the question so i won't be showing you anything with this one either um just because like i say it's not running at the moment but it would be exactly the same as the one that you will have just seen um runs proxmox runs everything um just talking about some of the other stuff in the rack so this is an avea ip office 500 phone system um, so I've got some Avea phones, which I might show you, you can see a picture of them. Um, this came with the rack, and it's in here just to experiment with, really, just to play around with, see what it does. Um, it never gets any use, it's just kind of here because it's here. This is our CCTV system, it's an old analog system, nothing too special there. A um, couple of PDUs, and of course this is the main switch, D-Link GDS 150, but obviously this is unplugged at the moment just because it's it's misconfigured and it's not letting some traffic through. I need to sit down and work out why that is. And of course, got the patch panel and the switch. Um, so this is just an old Netgear one. Um, both of them are gigabit, but that one's not very good. It's quite old. So I'd like to be using this one because this one's got 10 gig ports on it. Not that I can use them. So yeah, uh, that's going to pretty much conclude this video. Uh, I'm just going to say a massive thank you to watching um shout out to all the new subscribers let's see if we can hit 200 if you're not subscribed please just do it i think i might drop down to bi-weekly videos rather than weekly just because it's getting a bit harder to keep up the momentum at the moment um i'm thinking of like i said doing a tutorial series so let you let me know what you think of the format that we would have just had where i'm talking about what the servers run with the microphone and everything um, and then I might consider doing a tutorial and then I'll probably get this server going and we'll walk through installing Proxmox on this server and setting everything up exactly like I've got downstairs on this server here. So if you, that's something you sound interested in, let me have a know. Um, yeah, so that's been what I run on all of my servers. So that's a massive thank you for watching. Uh, see you in the next video, whenever and wherever that may be.